there. Thank God he's kept us, hasn't he? Huh? Everybody say it's all going to be all right. Let's worship the Lord today. If you want to stand up, you can. If you want to sit and be comfortable, we completely get it. It's just, it's just a, today is more about fellowship and love and just coming together. And, and uh, So many times Paul said, I can't wait to see your face. And the church would say, can't wait to see your face. Well, that's what this day is about, is getting to see each other and getting to fellowship together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's going to be a wonderful day. And thank you for being here today. You deserve it. You deserve it. 
blessing. What a blessing. And it's kind of fun to do it outside for a change. I can't quench. 
church, amen, that it burns out of me and overflows onto my neighbor and onto the things. It burns out the things that I've been believing God for. It's so good to be with you this morning, hallelujah, in the presence of our God. Thank you, Jesus. Sing it again, Sarah. Hallelujah. Lift your voices, hallelujah, to Jesus. church the body of christ is not a people that draws back i want to welcome first time guests folks that might have been watching on facebook live or, or just just joined us this, this morning it's an honor to have you all all here excuse me it is and uh oh no no that's fine. That's a, just, just to get started 
Okay, yeah, come on through. Exactly. <laughs> well, first time guest, folks, it, and and those that are on Facebook Live this morning uh, that have been joined with us through this time. It's it's an honor and a privilege. We love you, and and, and we it, we count it a privilege that you share this time with us Amen. as we share the word. I pray that uh, you have prepared the tithe and you have prepared your seed to sow. Now we've got buckets down here. We've got seed buckets. You know what? It's seed, but it feeds. Because when you plant the seed, the harvest will feed not only just you, but so many others. Because we all know that a seed, you know, a, a pecan tree doesn't produce a seed that just produces a, a pecan tree that produces one more seed. That pecan tree produces lots of seed. I want to remind you there are three different ways to, well, there's more than that, but if you count them individually, but cash or check, we've got envelopes up here if you need to fill one of those out. Would remind you the envelopes, because some of the laws, the laws and rules have changed where giving in churches is concerned, there's no longer a spot for a credit card or debit card on that. So you use the envelopes for checks or for cash if you're going to give uh, using your, your debit card. Uh, then you can go to the Give Plus app, which I can attest to is so simple and easy. It's like you, you could be sitting at home in the middle of a live service and just start dropping money in the, in the church bank account. How easy is that? You can also do text to give. I believe I've got that number because Miss Elisa did send that to me. If I can read it. Yeah. 8333. Hang on. 833-987-1988. That's a text to give uh, app. And if you want to pull up Facebook Live, I think it's on there uh, as well. And it's on the church site. And that's text to give, credit and debit cards, online or, or online or the app. So you can do it any of those ways. A couple of scriptures for you this morning. And one that has resounded with us a lot is in Psalms 91. And he tells us there that he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. We have been abiding. We did abide. We are abiding. And we will abide in, in his shadow. My refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. This might have been a season for you where you found that you were that trust, that faith was being tested in Luke chapter 12 it says and he said to his disciples for this reason I say to you do not worry about your life as to what you will eat nor what your body uh, nor for your body as to what you will put on for life is more than food and the body more than clothing consider the ravens for they neither saw nor sow nor nor reap they have no storeroom nor barn and yet God feeds them how much more will your daddy do for you? He will supply your every need. He perfects what concerns you. Your steps are ordered. On that note, Miss Elizabeth, as a body, we want to tell you and Jeff, we love you. We have, we do, and we will. So stay in touch. You are... You have been a vital member of this body in more ways than I think you know. So be blessed. And you tell your husband we love him and all them babies. So he's, he's got our back, folks. He's got our back. Tithers. We are tithers. And we're excited about tithing. His portion. Is it a heaven or hell issue? No. Is it important? Yes. Is it important to you? Kind of. Is it important to others? Immeasurably. Because that tithe and the seeds you sown, it does increase your life. But man, when it grows, it increases the lives of others. So this morning, we're going to present the tithe and seed. I would encourage you to participate. Father, we thank you right now, Lord, for the increase that is in our lives. Father, that you provide seed to us as sowers. And we are sowers. We're tithers. We're sowers. We lift up that portion, the first, the very best that we have to offer. Lord, we, we present it to you this morning. 
as a holy sacrifice. And we thank you that as we present your tithe, that you rebuke the devourer. You open the gates of heaven upon us, Lord Father. No weapon formed against our finances can prosper. We are not victims of circumstance. We are faithful believers in the increase and the prosperity that you promise us in your word, and your word does not lie. You are faithful to perform your word. We praise you, Father. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to sow. Lord, it's for the good of your kingdom, for the growth of your kingdom, for the, clor the glory of our Lord and our Savior, your Son, Jesus Christ, who shed his blood so that we would be redeemed. And we are redeemed, and we say so. And today, to your tithe, Lord Father, and to the seed we sow, because your word promises that it is true, it will be fruitful, and it will multiply. And we bless you for it today in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. All right, uh, first the kids, ages four to nine, Miss Bonnie and Mr. Blair, they are ready to take you for some fun. And we sure appreciate the opportunity they have to, uh, to do that. Also, when we leave, we're all going to jump in our cars, we're going to put it in drive, and we're going to cram on that pedal and go as fast as we can go, okay? No. The ushers will exit you. Okay, we're going to do this in an orderly fashion so that nobody gets hurt. We don't want any fender benders. We don't want, just be patient. It will happen quickly. We're going to get you out. We're going to do it in an orderly way. Also, pastors are going to be at that exit, which is where they'll take you to go. They're going to be at that exit so that they can shake your hand, bump your elbows, fist bump you, whatever. But they're going to they're gonna be right there. Watch for them, please. Okay, keep your eye out for them. Underwoods will wait. Okay. Bless you. All right, Pastor. see all of you. It's a blessing. Oh, we're so thankful that we can come together and look into your eyes, see your face. Many times in the Word, there's scriptures where they said, we can't wait to see your face. And I just want you to know that this has blessed us. Man, it's just really a blessing to get to see you. Really, really, really is. Really a blessing. I want to just say a couple of encouraging things to you. I won't keep you long. We've had a lot of online word together. I, I believe we've been effective as a church. Uh, I want to first of all give lots of thanks to leaders uh, that have just kept the ship moving straight ahead during all this. This has not been a one-man show or a Jason and Jody show. It's, I'm telling you, there's been a lot of busy behind the scenes. Uh, and, and I'm thankful. So would you give love to the leaders? It's been, it's been okay. <laughs> I've been asked to speak up just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> and I also, uh, right after that, I wanted to tell you, let's give love to the body for all of your faithfulness. And just keeping on going straight ahead, you know. That's what we do. That's what we do. Methods may change, but doctrine never changes. You never, you never, never, never change your doctrine. Methods delivery may change, but principle never changes. Doctrine never changes. 
I want to remind you that Daniel 3, 26 and 27 says they cast three men into the midst of. We've been in the midst of some things. But it says that when King Nebuchadnezzar looked in, he saw four men loosed, walking and dancing in the midst of the fire. And then, and then and verse 27 says they came out without the smell of what they had been in the midst of. The smell of it wasn't even on them. You couldn't even tell they'd ever been in it. And so... And then Daniel 6, 26 and 27 says <coughs> that Daniel was delivered from the power of the lions. I want to remind you, God did not deliver him from the lions. God delivered him from the power of the lions. And there is a difference. And so just because you're among the lions does not mean that God has not been faithful. Sometimes he removes the lines. Other times he just closes their mouth. Sometimes he takes you around the fiery furnace. Other times he just gets in the furnace with you. But the righteous are never forsaken. Are you here? And so just because that you're in the fire doesn't mean that God's not been faithful. Doesn't mean the word's not true. He delivers you from the power of the fire. He delivers you from the power of the lines. And then you go way uh, in history to the right, and you go to 2 Timothy 3, and Paul said that God delivered me from the mouth of the lion, and that was persecution through people. And so, can I... Some kind of allergen in the midst of my eye. <laughs> I want to read something to you just right quick. I won't keep you long at all. But in Acts 27, in Acts 27, we uh, read where Paul is on a ship. He's going to be taken to Rome. <laughs> Remember that? And uh, Paul encourages him. He says, men and brethren, it is not a... Uh, he said, men and brethren, this is not a good time to sail. And they believe the captain of the ship more than Paul. You know, what does an apostle know about sailing? <laughs> that's, their, that's their thought. And so they go ahead and they get on the boat and they're, they're sailing out. And we know that a huge hurricane comes. Uh, and Paul encourages them with these words. And I want to read this scripture to you. Paul said, I exhort you to be of good cheer. For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you. There shall be no loss of any man's life among you. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. He doesn't serve the angel, but he serves God. You follow me? And he said, Fear not, Paul, you must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God has given you all them that sail with you. Now this isn't a real popular point, but it is a, a biblical point, And that is, it's important who you sail with. <laughs> There's people that will argue that, and that's fine. I'm not going to argue. But it is vital who I sail with. That's biblical. And I thank God to be sailing. Thank you. I thank God to be sailing with a company of believers, Bible believers, sound doctrine believers. You know what I'm saying. All that goes into that. People that understand covenant. People that understand how to act on the covenant. Are you here today? And so he said, God's given you all them that sail with you. Now listen here. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God. Say that with me. I believe God. And he says, I believe God that it will be even as it was told me. Now that's a huge statement. Paul says, I believe that it will turn out exactly the way God told me it would turn out. 
And listen to me, the storm gets worse after he got the word, after he proclaimed the word. But listen to me, God was with him in the midst of it. How many of you can look back and truly with faith and with truth say, I know God was with me and I know he delivered me. Psalm 91, he said, though a thousand fall here, though a ten thousand fall here, he said, it will not come nigh you. That must mean within a centimeter of you is not nigh you. <laughs> huh? You can be in the midst of it, but you're not touched by it. And so you just stay with the Word. You stay with the Spirit. Say that. Stay with the Word. Stay with the Spirit. That's always the main ingredients to victory. You know, some victories don't come in an hour. Some of them don't come overnight. Some of them don't come in a week. Some of them don't come in a month or a year. But victory always comes to the one that will just stay with God, stay with His Word, stay with His Spirit, stay in the love of God, stay in the faith of God, stay in the peace of God, stay in the joy of God. Am I right, Lino? You just stay with it. Say that. Stay with it. <laughs> and so... Paul says, I believe God, it will be even as it was told me. However, we must be cast upon a certain island. Now, Paul doesn't even know the island they're going to be cast upon. He just knows in here we're going we're gonna to run into some island. Well, I can tell you, what are we going to do next week? I don't know. <laughs> we're going to be cast up on some island. We just don't know what that island is right now. And that's the same place you're in, you know. Well, you know, what's next week going to look like? What regulations will they have next week? What's it going to look like six months from now? I don't know, but I know it's going to be good for the believer. I can promise you that. It's going to be good for the believer. It's going to be good for the believer by the believer. I mean the one that stays with God, stays with His Word, doesn't buck the system. As long as they're not asking us anything that's ungodly, immoral, or anti-Christ, we're going to abide by the laws. Okay? Well, what if they asked us something that was anti-Christ? I don't believe our governor of Texas would do that, and I don't believe that, that Brother Trump would do that. I trust both of them in my spirit. Now, that'll just, that just, just, whoo, boy, that'll bring the religious politician out and, and people, but, you know, there's reasons that the churches of China and all those places had to go underground with certain things, okay? We're not at that point. And so, and I thank God for our governor. I thank God for our president. And so, he says we're going to be cast up on some, some certain island. And you can go to the end of the chapter. And they, they came to a certain island, Melita. And so, I just want to encourage you. Even though you don't know what the outcome's going to look like, you can always trust God. Now, trusting God, we know trusting God is not just sitting back saying, well, it's all in the hands of God. Well, if it is, he's got it in a big, big mess. Because that's just a religious cop-out is all that statement is. It takes the responsibility off of the believer to be a doer of the word, to stay with God, to hear God, to pray out the mysteries of God. God's got it all in the hands of him, yeah, but he's exercising his authority and power through the believing church. Okay? And so, oh, is that Miss Taylor? Yeah, that's my wife. Oh, that's one of our brethren driving, not in it, but driving it. Bless her today. How precious. So the believing church. Stay filled up. Keep yourself built up. I wanna I wanna just end with, with this portion of scripture. I said that for encouragement, but this is what I've had in my heart. I want to declare it over you. First John 5, 1 to 5. Listen what he says. Whoever believes that Jesus is the anointed one. How many of you believe that today? I believe that. He is born of God. I'm born again. I'm born of God. Why? Because I believe that Jesus is the Christ. I believe he's the son of God. And everyone that loves him that begat loves him also that is begotten or born of God. By this we know that we love the children of God. 
when we love God and we cherish His commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not burdensome. They're not griefsome. They're for our liberty. Huh? They're, they're, pers they're prescriptions for victory. The word commandment in your Bible literally translates authoritative prescription. Isn't that interesting? For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. The world is a word that means world system. Don't think planet. Don't think earth. Think the system that's operating it. Satan is the God of the system. He's the God of the world, not the God of the earth. God of the system. Who, whatever is born of God overcomes the system. God will keep us in that place of victory, church. He'll keep us there. He'll give us wisdom. He'll give us leading of the Spirit. We'll know what to do. Huh? Might be one week at a time for a season. Who knows? But, it, it, but, but we'll know what to do. God will lead us. Say that. God will lead us. We will know what to do. And so whatever is born of God overcomes the system. In the Greek, that word overcomes is a present tense ongoing verb. Whatever is born of God keeps overcoming the system. Keeps overcoming the system. Listen, when the system said, you will not worship that God, and the three Hebrew children stayed with God, and there's a lot that could be said right there of the faith of God that came upon them and grace to empower them. Listen, they overcame the system. Didn't they? They overcame the system that said, you cannot worship this God. They stayed with it, and they overcame the system. Isn't that wonderful? And so whatever is born of God overcomes the system. And this is the victory that overcomes the system. Our faith in God. That's the victory. That's the victory. Is our faith in God. Who is he that overcomes the system? He that believes that Jesus is the Son of God. So remember, that's why Jesus said, you are not of this world. Remember, that's a system. Even, he said, as I am not of this world system. So, I want to encourage you today that your faith in God, your active faith in God, is the victory that will keep you overcoming the system. No matter what it looks like, a week from now, a month from now, this is the victory. That we as a church will stay in together, encouraging one another, supporting one another. And we will come out and continue and continue and continue yeah. to overcome the system. Yeah. It might be, again, it might be week at a time coming together. Might be, might, we'll know what to do. Yeah. We'll know what to do. We'll stay with God. Now I want to encourage you. I want to read this over you. And then we'll have our last song together. Hadn't it been a blessing to come together? Everybody. 1 John 2.12 I write little children. Little children is Daddy John. He's, he's approximately 90 to 95 years old here. Little children is a word that means my dear ones. I mean, it would be like you talking to your grandbaby. That's, that's the thought of the word, little children. So he's talking to the entire church when he says this. I write unto you, my precious little children. This is John. He, 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 he's the founder of this church. Because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. That's good. That's everybody encourage you today I remind you that your sins are forgiven for his name's sake huh? why are they forgiven for his name's sake some good translations say your sins are forgiven by the power of his name somebody say I am forgiven I am forgiven for his name's sake for his name's sake and my faith in him hallelujah hallelujah so he says again, he says, I write to you, my precious children, because your sins are forgiven. The Hebrew thought of forgiven 
does not just mean to remove your to cleanse you or just remove the sin. It means to literally separate that out of you. It's not even as this new person in Christ. It's not even part of who you are. So he says, your sins are forgiven for his name's sake. Now listen, I write unto you fathers, and that word is not just gender. It, it's, 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 inclu it's an inclusive word of parents. I write unto you parents because you have known him. That's an intimate working experience. Parents, you know him. Come on. He'll lead you. He will guide you. You'll know what to do. Well, I don't know what to do, but you will. And you just keep that confession in your, in your mind. Father, I thank you that I know what to do. And I ask you in your prayer time, Father, I thank you that we as a church, we know exactly what to do. We're in victory. I'm going to tell you just right off the bat, the church is in a wonderful place. The church has continued to increase. I'll let you know your giving has increased. During this season, the people's giving has increased. It, it, I'm serious. It's increased. It's, it's upped. Huh? And we haven't had a $1,400 electric bill, so we've been able to put, put a little back. <laughs> we may do this another five months. Just <laughs> yeah, well, all of them said, we'll do it again in the fall. <laughs> but I say that to encourage you that everybody's faith has just upped. It's increased. People's giving has increased. And I say that to the glory of God, but I say it to encourage you. That shows you. It shows you what we truly believe. We believe that God is our source. So I want to encourage you with that. So he says, I write to you parents because you have known. You've had, you've had intimate working experience with the Lord. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Now he says again, I want to say this over our, our young people. He says, I write unto you young people. Are you listening, Renovate? Listen to this. I write unto you young ones because you have overcome the wicked one. Man, that's a powerful point. I write unto you young ones because you have overcome the wicked one. How did we overcome? He that overcomes is he that believes Jesus is the Son of God. Remember that? Huh? When I believe into him, I am brought out of the system. I am purged and, and literally rebirthed. There's something that I don't know that any minister can really just exalt. Something God does on the inside of you that you just know, I'm new. Something new. I don't have a desire for that anymore. I lost my taste for that. Huh? And all of a sudden, I love God. I love His Word. I love His people. fellowship with the brethren. And there's a witness of it in here. You are born again. I mean, you can encourage from the Scripture, but the Spirit is what bears witness with it, with your spirit, that you are born again. Huh? You are born again. You're made an overcomer by the blood of Christ and by receiving Him. So He says, I write unto you, young ones, because you have overcome the wicked one. Now listen, he goes back to the children. I write unto you, my precious children, because all of you have known the Father. You've had working experience with the, the presence of God. I'm write, writing unto you parents again, he says, because you have known him that is from the beginning. You've had working experience with him. You parents, you know the presence of God. You know he's faithful. You know he'll lead you. He's never a minute too late. Sometimes it's right up till I mean the last second, but he's never too late, is he? Is he, parents? <laughs> no, he's faithful to us. Now he says again, I've written unto you young men, young ones. Here's the one I wanted to just speak over us. Because you are strong. The word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. And I say that over to you. His word. That you are strong. You are strong. His word. On the inside of you. 
and you have overcome yes. the wicked one. Yes. And because you have receiving Jesus. He that's born again overcomes the wicked one. But now that's why you can continually overcome. Overcome. You can overcome it. Some overcoming, listen, there's not a, it's always with the word and the spirit, but there's not a, a cookie cutter. It's not a one size fits all. You may overcome certain things. I may lick my own wounds. You may want people to help you lick your wounds, so to say. But there's not a one as long as we just Keep overcoming. Keep overcoming. See? And it might not come overnight. might not come in a couple days. But those that will stay with the Word and stay with the Spirit, you will get the victory because He's promised you that. So I declare over all of you today that you are strong in the Lord and the power of His might. And the Word of God does abide on the inside of you. He lives on the inside of you. And you have already overcome the wicked one. And that's why in Him, you can continue to overcome Him. Might be day at a time. Some victories, man, listen to me. There was a few victories in my life that I'm telling you, they came second. By the second, the next second, you feel like you're losing your mind. And you win it that next second. I remember Pastor telling me, son, the way you win is you win one thought at a time. So I encourage you today that the victory is yours. And I release my faith. I say over you that you are strong in the Lord and the power of His might. And that word that does live on the inside of you, it'll fight its own battle. It knows what to do. It's like the anointing. You lay hands on somebody, the anointing knows where to go. He's smart. The anointing's savvy. He knows where to go on the inside of your body. So say this with me. Say, I am strong in the Lord. I am strong in the Lord. His word does live in me. His word does live in me. And I have overcome the wicked one. And I have overcome the wicked one. Because I believe. Because I believe. That Jesus. That Jesus. Is the Christ. Is the Christ. The Son of God. The Son of God. And I am forgiven. And I am forgiven. For his name's sake. For his name's sake. <laughs> God bless you today. Amen. God bless you today. My, 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 my. It's so, so, so good to be with you. We're going to do a final song. I'm going to ask Big C Callaway to come up here with us. Woo! It's a blessing. Him and Molly Joe are going to lead us in the last song. All right.
something you've never done to show them how much you love them. Thank you, Jesus.
tell you how much it's blessed us to get to be with you. Yeah. Same as I believe it blesses you to get to be with the body too. Uh, we love you. And uh, we're not against you hugging one another. You do it at your own faith level. God bless you. God bless you so much. Uh. Thank you.